getting. You can't always. This is the death. Remarkably him. Turn back. Towards God. Rise up. Hello and welcome to a time of excitement and inspiration. I'm Manoj Sanni and together with Shalom World, we'll take you through the journeys of a group of ordinary people in the Jesus Youth Movement who dared to follow an extraordinary call as a part of the full-time volunteer project. A project that has been instilling the missionary lifestyle in young people for the last 28 years. A project that has put 28 batches of young people around 2000 so far through a 30 day intensive training and placing them in mission centers around the world for a whole year. And that's exactly why they are called God's crazy people. Today we have someone very special joining us from Cambodia. She was born in Multan, Pakistan, to Luis Purvis and Camila, and is the only sister to two boys. After completing a bachelor's with fifth rank in her university, she decided to attend the international full-timers training in Thailand in 2019 and is placed in Cambodia now. It is my joy to welcome Shoreen, joining us from Cambodia. Shoreen, a hearty welcome. Uh, thank you so much. It's truly an honor and a pleasure to be here. Sure, in taking one year break from studies, especially when you are a rank holder in a university, it's not an easy thing. So, like, why did you took that decision and what was the response from your family and your friends and relatives? So, even when I was uh, going for the training, it was never a plan that I will go to some other country for one year, quitting my new job and, uh, you know, and not uh, continuing my studies further. And uh, because I knew I wanted to go, but I already knew that my parents are never going to uh, say yes, because uh, I belong to a very simple family uh, where uh, the focus is just on education and your career. And there is no other option for you. So I already knew that. But then uh, in the last few days of my training, I just could not hold back that desire. And I just spoke to uh, our training coordinator, Mr. Subin Jacob. And he said, uh, at least you should ask them so that you cannot regret in the future that you never asked. So, and Father Das also encouraged me to ask. And he said that at the end of the day, it's God's will, but you should at least ask your parents. So I just took the courage and uh, I asked them and as uh, I knew, they said no. And uh, I didn't give them a long list of reasons that why I wanted to go. I just told them that uh, I'll be very happy to go. Uh, definitely, I'm going to obey whatever your decision is. But I just want you to take some time and think and then just let me know. And uh, then uh, I also asked my bishop who is very supportive, uh, Bishop Benny Mario Travis. Uh, he's amazingly humble man of God. Uh, he's very supportive and uh, always encourage all the youth and just youth especially. So I asked him, I somewhere in my mind, I thought that uh, maybe uh, he, uh, the church is expecting uh, me to uh, go and uh, serve in the local church, to go back and serve in the lo uh, local church. I asked him, but he said, if your parents allow, I have no problem. I'll be happy for, uh, for you. So after that, everything just fell into place. And uh, my brother and some Jiz youth elders were uh, trying to convince my parents in, in that whole journey. And one day I got a message from my younger brother that they agreed and you can say yes to the team. Praise God. I'm sure that your experience in Cambodia is going to help to serve your local church when you go back to Pakistan. 
Let me ask you, Sharin, when you reached Thailand, it was the first international trip and you were in Thailand. Everything was different from different parts of the world. The participants were there. Of course, uh, it's such an intense training for a whole month, one full month. Uh, how did you enjoy it? How was the training and how did it benefit you? So it was my first international tour and uh, I was so excited. But at the same time, I was nervous because I, uh, I was never... Um, alone without my family so it was a bit challenging in the beginning and the food you know was very different but with the passage of time as we started uh, the retreat it was like uh, you know emptying ourselves so it and after that they, you know it, uh, the training consists of the different sessions it includes dynamics and then the uh, sessions on word of god church history everything it was a complete package so it helped me a, a lot to grow spiritually and also uh, to come up as a more courageous person and uh, it has helped me a lot and basically the training was one, uh, is one of the reason that uh, i'm here now before your trip to cambodia i know that your father had a brain stroke and he was paralyzed and uh, you are the only daughter but still you decided to continue with your decision and your family also gave you the permission to go to Cambodia. Could you please explain the situation you faced at that time? It was a very difficult situation. Um, as I told you that uh, even before that there were many challenges. Uh, the permission and my relatives were also not not very supportive at the first place but after that somehow they uh, agreed and they were happy that I'm going and uh, everything was going well the visa procedure started and almost my flights were going to book just 15 days before my departure from Pakistan suddenly one evening my father felt something on his face uh, he just went for a normal checkup and uh, he was diagnosed with uh, facial paralysis. And when he came back, it was a big shock for us because he never had any uh, uh, history of uh, such condition. So we decided to go to a specialist. And when we went there, it was even a bigger shock because he told us that it's not just a simple facial paralysis, but it's a brain stroke and it's a very serious condition. And he admitted my father at the same time. And it was a very bad situation, very worse situation for for our whole family. And uh, after that, uh, because of the prayers of the whole Jesus Youth family, I must say it's, it's a beauty of the of being in a Jesus Youth family that people all around the world were praying for my father, and he got recovered very soon. And after within a week, he was discharged from the hospital. And after that, I was, uh, I'm the only daughter and my mother is a working lady. She's a teacher, so she has to go to school. At that point of time, I was the only one who was taking care of his diet and his uh, medicine, everything. So I could never imagine to leave him and go somewhere. So, but whenever, because we were in that procedure, so I was always, this thing was in my mind, okay, either I'm going or not. So whenever I used to think, I uh, I used to tell myself that I cannot be so selfish. I cannot leave my father in that situation uh, and I cannot go. But when whenever I, uh, I was saying this to me, I could hear that voice inside my heart that, Shireen, just go for it. I will take care of your father. And I used to ignore that voice because I thought maybe I, uh, it's just a random one. But whenever I was saying that I am being selfish if I go, this I could clearly hear that that voice inside my heart. And one day we were just sitting together. With my, I was sitting with my family, and um, I could not hold back that voice. And I just asked them in a very simple way, "Okay, so now uh, what's the plan now?" And uh, they asked me. I said, "No, I'm not going to leave you in that situation." But my father said, "No, I'm doing well now. So everything is done. You should go." Uh, he asked me that God has a plan for you. So now everything is done and I'm doing great. So you can definitely go for it. And then everything just fell into place and I, I went. I came here now. Praise God, Shireen, for such parents. After you reached Cambodia, again, completely new place, language, culture, food, everything is different. What are some of the initial challenges you face there and or like you're still facing there? 
I think as such, during my this year in Cambodia, there are not so many challenges. But yeah, maybe just little in the beginning, uh, there was a language barrier, you know. I could not uh, speak well in the beginning. But the people here are very supportive and very caring and loving. Even the place where I'm staying, they are so loving. It's just, it's like, it's not just like my family. It is my family, I can say. In the beginning, I had uh, some traveling problems. Uh, like I used to travel alone from one province to another. So there have been many times when I was uh, not not told that in the beginning that uh, uh, they will stop in the middle and I have to change the van or something. So I was not able to communicate with them. I, I was able to understand a little bit, but with the local people, it was very difficult. But during that whole thing, uh, one thing that I used to do was just to say, Hail Mary. And every time when I was stuck somewhere, I just used to say one Hail Mary. And within the seconds, the situation was clear every time. Yeah, so it helped me a lot. Otherwise, there were not so many challenges. Yeah. Sharin, before we proceed with further questions, I have a surprise for you. Joining us now is Sister Teresa Ratha, belongs to the lovers of the Holy Cross congregation, started by MEP fathers, all the way from Kampong Chang Vicariate, Cambodia. When this pandemic situation started, everything was closed. So she used to feel bad because she did not have my work to do. But she still used to have cook in cleaning the center and in cooking. She also spent that time in her personal growth by spending time in prayer, meditation, and Bible study. I saw her that she loves God and loves the Word of God, and she not only read it, but share it with me. I am always happy to meet her. She has a good heart. I get a chance to speak English with her, but more than that, now I have a good friend who understand me. When I met her in the first time, I found her very friendly. Whenever she meets anyone, even a stranger, she likes to speak with them. She always likes to her. I remember in the evening, she used to come to pray with us and whenever if I was doing any work, she always asked me, can I have your sister? She teaches English to me and to all the students. She is always very happy to teach. In the beginning, when we could not speak well, she tried to understand nicely and calmly. Students really enjoy the time when she teaches Jesus action songs to them and tell something about Jesus and Bible. So Sharin, can you share any humorous moment during this year that you remember? Thank you, Sister Teresa. Sharin, it looks like you have a good friend and a mentor there. And going back to her question, what was the most humorous moment you have okay, you had there till now? Actually, I'm a videophobic, which is fear of snakes. And I live in a place where there's a garden, so there are snakes as well. So it happened many times that snakes uh, entered our living area. So they used to enjoy my reactions. So um, at the beginning, I was very scared and uh, I never enjoyed that. But now I have also started enjoying that. And uh, one more thing that um, it, ha it happened four to five times. And now I think uh, God is helping me to overcome my fear as well. <laughs> yeah. My final question to you. Uh, what is the message you want to share with your peers, okay, young people around you? I don't feel I'm in a place to give some uh, kind of advice or message. But yeah, I can share what I have experienced and learned from that. So I would like to say that... Uh, especially to the young people that never ever be afraid to say yes to the Lord. I would uh, 
quote one line which is from uh, i read somewhere from some anonymous writer and it changed my life so it was like it's not your ability that matters to god but your availability so don't think that you are not able not worthy you're sinful you don't have enough confidence all these things and excuses are just the lies of satan your only true identity is that you are the children of god and once you embrace that identity your life is going to be transformed what i used to do is i just every day i used to pray that god please use me as an instrument of your love and compassion and you will see all the doors will open and god will make way for you so just be courageous and say yes Shireen, it was such a pleasure to have you with us today. May God continue to use you as a powerful instrument to reach many more young people in Cambodia and back in Pakistan. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. We are talking about a special call and we are all set to meet a special guest for the day. For the Linson Lewis SDB a Salesian missionary serving in Don Bosco School, Jorhat in Assam. He discerned his vocation through the Jesus Youth Movement and took a one-year commitment in the year 2000 in Manipur. Let us welcome this young dynamic priest, Father Linson Lewis. When I was doing my college studies, I had distanced myself from the church and prayer life. And it troubled my mother so much and, he forced, and she forced me to go for a uh, charismatic retreat for young people and that is how I landed for a retreat. Something strange happened there. I don't know what it was but a kind of spark came into my life and I thought I should change my life. I should come back to God. I should spend time in prayer. And when I came back to my parish, one of my youngsters, young friends, uh, introduced me to a prayer meeting which happened uh, in my parish every Wednesday. It was a uh, Jesus Youth Prayer Meeting. Uh, many youngsters from a nearby university, they were gathering there and having fellowship. It was so wonderful. And one day one of the youngsters came to this prayer meeting and he, and he said, he is a full-timer. Full-timer, I did not know what it was. He said, after your graduation, you can spend one year. And I'm spending or giving one year for the Lord. And I was thinking, uh, in my mind, I should do something for the Lord. And I was thinking that, I should become a priest. And I told this youngster, and he said, this is a good chance for you to discern your vocation. Spend one year in prayer and mission for the Lord. And with the permission of my parish priest, I opted to become a uh, full-timer after my graduation uh, to spend one year. And I thought it will be a good time for me to discern what God is asking me to do in my life, whether he's calling me to become a priest or not. And that is why how I joined for this full-time worship. When I look back, I find this year, which I took for the Lord, this one year, it really gave me a base for my spiritual journey towards priesthood. And when I had doubts regarding my vocation, and I was confused what way to take, which way to go, I always look back to that year which I spent for the Lord and I really got encouragement and strength to go ahead in my uh, vocation. Since I was with young people, I chose to join the Salesian congregation, uh, Salesians of uh, Don Bosco of Dimapu province in uh, uh, northeast of India. And I'm very happy to be a priest and it really motivates me to work for young people of this area. Uh, when I see this one year which I spent in Northeast, in Manipur, it really boosts me and really gives me courage and strength to go ahead and uh, work for the young people. I encourage all the young people to take this challenge and dedicate a year for the Lord and you, God will give you thousands and thousands of blessings in your life and for your family. God bless you. Thank you very much, Father Linson. I am reminded of the words of Pope Francis in Christus Vivid underlining the importance of accompanying young people. An especially important quality in mentors is the acknowledgement of their own humanity, the fact that they are human beings who make mistakes. 
not perfect people but forgiven sinners mentors should not lead young people as passive followers but walk alongside with them allowing them to be active participants in the journey thank you father i know that the youth around you are blessed to have a mentor like you so if any one of you listening to me now is inspired to answer a similar call who desire to walk alongside the young people do get in touch with us so that's it for today friends let's keep each other in prayer and stay crazy for god until we meet again next week for the same program on shalom world for more exciting contents watch shalomworld.org and download the free apps of shalom world on your ios and android devices thank you use media a lot in evangelization so i believe in the importance of catholic radio catholic tv catholics using the new media can i encourage everyone to watch your home tv i think it's a great vehicle of evangelization and god bless all of you